A warm welcome back. I'm Sage and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Let's get started with today's market close commentary. At the closing bell, ASX trades higher on gains in mining stocks. Silver Lake Resources up 6% and the benchmark index ASX 200 continues its upward trajectory at the close after the Reserve Bank of Australia or RBA upgraded the GDP growth forecast and committed to remain highly accommodative until 2024. The benchmark is up 21.5 points or 0.30% to 7,083 supported by gains in mining stocks. However, losses in tech and healthcare stocks restricted the gains. In the last five sessions, the index has climbed 0.82%. And on the sectoral front, seven of 11 sectors are trading in green while materials and energy stocks continue to dominate market with solid gains. Other sectors that are trading higher include AREIT, financials, energy, telecommunication services, consumer discretionary and consumer staples. Some of the worst performing sectors are information technology, utilities, healthcare and industrials. And moving on to the latest announcements from the RBA. The Reserve Bank of Australia, or RBA, on Friday released quarterly statements on monetary policy, which confirmed the central bank's upgrade to its gross domestic product, or GDP, and employment forecasts remained intact. In the monthly policy meeting on Tuesday, the central bank had projected GDP growth to around 4.75 per cent over 2021 and 3.5 per cent over 2022 and while unemployment rate was pegged at around 5 per cent by the end of 2021 and 4.5 per cent by the end of the forecast period in mid-2023. In an 82-page policy document, the RBA said that Australia's economic recovery has been better than expected, but if policies need to be highly accommodative to support a return to full employment and inflation consistent with the target. The Apex Bank repeated that it will not raise interest rates until actual inflation falls within its target range, which is unlikely to be until 2024 at the earliest. And now, let's have a look at the gainers and the losers. Among individual shares, Silver Lake Resources Limited was top gainer on ASX, rising over 6.4% to 1.915 Australian dollars. The gold miner has gained tracking cues from an overnight jump in bullion prices as a weaker dollar and easing treasury yields propelled the safe haven metal over the key $1,800 psychological level. Australian gold sub-index AXGD jumped as much as 3.2% on Friday, its highest since 28th April 2021. Webjet Limited, Appen Limited, Remelius Resources Limited and Evolution Mining Limited were among other top gainers. Some of the top losers are Pro Medicus, Newix, CSR, Neomap Limited and Afterpay. And now let's glance at the shares that are in the news today. Beginning with Regenius Limited share price gained 4.35% to 0.12 Australian dollars after the company said it has managed to secure up to 4.5 million Australian dollars in a three-stage placement of its ordinary shares to New Life Sciences Capital, a US-based investor. The company said that the placements will fund acceleration of work required to start the Progenza TM Osteoart arthritis phase two trial in the US and for general working capital needs. The share price of Quick Fee Limited gained as much as 42% to 0.355 Australian dollars on strong lending in the month of April. And the digital lending firm says April lending in Australia hit a new high for financial year 21 at 3.5 million Australian dollars, up 30% on the previous highest month in financial year 21, which shows signs of recovery in local business. And shares of Emico Holdings traded at 1.3% lower at 0.977 dollars. 
Jefferies expects Emeco to post earnings growth in financial year 22 and the agency has forecasted free cash flow of 80 million Australian dollars in financial year 21 to 23 which is likely to be split between dividends, growth, capex and deleveraging and meanwhile the company on Thursday approved capital management policy which would allocate 25 to 40 percent of operating net profit after tax to be directed towards buybacks and or dividends from the second half of 21 and beyond. National Australia Bank Limited traded flat with marginal gains after financial analysts raised concerns that the bank faces risks from potential losses in business portfolio and higher costs. According to JP Morgan analysts, NAB's first half result was disappointing versus their forecasts. Australia's third largest lender, NAB, reported a 10.3 per cent drop in earnings from its business and private banking unit in March quarter. Investment and financial services firm Macquarie Group has released the financial year 21 earnings report which shows that the company remained undeterred by the COVID-19 pandemic at least from a revenue standpoint. It reported 10% growth in net profit after tax attributable to ordinary shareholders at 3,015 million Australian dollars for the financial year ended 31st March 2021. As compared to previous corresponding periods, and Macquarie's board has also declared a final ordinary dividend of $3.35 Australian per share for financial year 21. The record date is 18th May 2021 and the payment date is July 2nd 2021. The share price of Tadcor Holdings Limited soared on Friday after the company announced that it has received a revised unsolicited non-binding and indicative proposal from Apollo dated 6th of May 2021. The revised proposal refers to Apollo's potential purchase of Tadcor's wagering in media and gaming services businesses for a total valuation of 4 billion Australian dollars or Tadcor's wagering and media company for 3.5 billion Australian dollars. The share price of Sports Hero Limited rose over 6% to 0.32 Australian dollars after the company announced that it has signed a revenue sharing partnership with UK based Sports Clips Limited, which has exclusive subscriber agreement with Indosat Uridu, Indonesia's second largest telco. And the deal is for three years, and both the firms will equally share subscriber revenue generated. From Indonesian sports clips to bright subscribers on Indosat Uridu. Goodman Group has released the third quarter performance report and the company has reported strong operating performance during March quarter, driven by customer-led demand for its assets in selected markets. The demand is driven by the changing consumption trends across the physical and digital spaces. Austal Limited share price rose over 2% to $2.43 Australian after the company cleared its stance on participation in a consortium that is negotiating to buy the former Hunjin Heavy Industries shipyard at Subic Bay in the Philippines. The company stated that it has made major investments in its Australian Asian shipyards, including in the Philippines, and is looking forward to expand further its operations. However, there is no certainty that any additional expansion will be either pursued or completed. Caninda Resources Limited share price jumps 25% after latest results confirm the presence of large gold intervals. The company has said that it has received the results of successful latest trenching and indicate presence of substantial gold intervals in almost all trenches with higher grades coincident with the mapped structures. So Newmap Limited witnessed volatile trade on Friday after falling 23% on Thursday amid reports of legal proceedings against its US-based subsidiary in a patent infringement case. The company has denied the allegations by US rival Eagleview stating that the patent infringement allegations are baseless. Eagleview on Wednesday claimed Newmap had infringed eight patents and it shall claim damages for the same. White Cliff Minerals Limited announced the results of reverse circulation or RC drilling at the company's 100% owned Reedy South Gold project near Kew in Western Australia on Thursday in March 2021. The six hole 1546 meter RC program was completed. Following the updates, the stock is up 29% at 0.022 Australian dollars. 
On to graphite developer Vault Resources Limited, whose shares plummeted 96% to 0 0.025 Australian dollars today. The company had issued an update on the progress of due diligence for the acquisition of a 70% interest in the Zevalivsky Group on companies on Thursday, or the ZG Group. The company had also shared Deloitte Ukraine's financial and tax draft due diligence report and Avalum's legal and commercial draft due diligence report have also been obtained and are currently being reviewed by the Vault Board and management. And now moving on to the commodity market updates. In commodity markets, gold prices edge higher on Friday as the weaker US dollar propelled the precious metal and an inflation hedge above the key $1,800 US an ounce for the first time in the last 10 weeks. Spot gold price was quoting at $1,819 US dollars per ounce, up 0.23%. Crude oil futures were trading higher during the mid-morning trade in Asia May 7th as rising COVID-19 cases in India weighed on market sentiment. However, weak US dollar provided some support to oil prices and Brent crude futures were up 0.63% at US $65.12 a barrel. And the WTI crude futures also rose 0.70% to $65.16 a barrel. And before we finish off for the week, a short report on the COVID front from Sydney. No, nuclear, sorry, no new locally acquired cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in New South Wales overnight with five new cases in hotel quarantine. And this is some relief to the residents of New South Wales as we wait in anticipation to see how much impact the one new COVID case locally acquired this week will have on the COVID front. And up until now, New South Wales had gone five weeks without any new locally acquired transmissions of the deadly virus. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian has put into place proportionate restrictions over the weekend ending on Monday 12am in the aim to prevent any further infections of the coronavirus. Thank you so much for your time watching through the day and through the week and that's all for now in the last trade. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you on Monday, mind you, 10am as close as possible live from Sydney. This is Sage signing off.